Do gable vents actually work? There are a lot of ways to vent a roof, but not all strategies are made equal. In this video, we're going to talk about the limitations of gable vents and why you actually want to opt for a soffit to ridge vent wherever possible if you plan on venting your roof system to avoid potential moisture problems and ice damming. Let's get into it. So what exactly is a gable vent and why do we see them so frequently in older homes and buildings? Gable vents are exactly what they sound like. They are vent openings located on gable walls that are typically louvered and screened to allow for airflow within the attic space. They're conveniently located and help to expel some of the hot air that would accumulate in these unconditioned and uninsulated attic spaces back in the day. Now, before we dive any further into gable vents, there are a few things that you need when designing and building a successful vented roof or vented attic system. You need an air inlet. This is the air intake for the vented roof. You need an air outlet. This is where air leaves the building or where air is exhausted out of the roof. And you need a driving force. The driving force is a really big deal as it facilitates the continuous movement of air from the intake vent to the outlet. The first and most common driving force that we use to vent roofs is the stack effect. Warm air rises. It's less dense than cool air, and so the stack effect is a result of thermal buoyancy. The next driving force is wind. The wind can blow air into the intake vent and out the outlet vent to facilitate ventilation. But once the wind stops blowing, and if we can't use the stack effect to get air moving, we get stagnation. The last driving force that we can use is mechanical ventilation. In the context of a vented roof, this would be a power vent that sucks air in or pushes air out of the unconditioned attic space, and this is often used when the current venting strategy just isn't working because the stack effect isn't working properly, or if the wind isn't providing enough ventilation into the attic space. A power vent is basically a ventilator for a sick building that can't breathe on its own. So going back to gable vents, what is the driving force that we rely on? It's not the stack effect, because the gable vents are not located at the top of the ridge, and soffit venting may or may not be present or effective. Therefore, gable vents rely on the wind as a driving force to provide ventilation, and if the wind isn't blowing, the roof is not venting properly, and this is why we tend to see a lot of moisture problems in attics which have been vented through gable walls and not with soffit to ridge venting, and it's why we generally see power vents being attached to the gable vents, because the gable vents are not working the way that they should. Now, there's a big caveat to all of this that needs to be addressed. Older homes and buildings leaked a lot of air and were uninsulated. Even though the attic space was pretty much unconditioned, it was still fairly close to the conditions of the living space, and things dried out relatively quickly if they got wet, either by a bulk water leak or by the formation of condensation. However, after we started retrofitting these attics with insulation, or even building new highly insulated attics with gable venting, we started to see a lot of problems because that attic space was no longer coupled to the conditioned interior space, so these attics were now colder and much closer to exterior conditions. Moisture that either diffuses through the ceiling or leaks through holes and penetrations now has a higher chance of forming condensation on the back side of the sheathing or increasing the moisture content of the wooden components in the attic. Since the attic is colder and because there isn't consistent airflow to help carry away that moisture. What's worse is that, if there is substantial air leakage through the ceiling, that can suck air out of the building, causing the home to operate at a negative pressure environment, and the moisture generated from the interior space will end up in the attic a lot quicker. In warmer climates, gable vents and vented attics in general can cause problems if the ductwork is located within the unconditioned attic space. Think about it, we're allowing warm, humid air to migrate into the attic space where it'll come into contact with the ducts that are likely blowing cold air into the interior space. Apart from the obvious energy penalties, which can be as much as 25%, condensation has a really high likelihood of forming on those ducts, even if they're insulated, because they are rarely airtight, and that warm, humid air will come into contact with the cold surface, and that's where we tend to see a lot of mold issues in attics in hot, humid climates. So, do gable vents work? Not very well, unless you're located in an area with consistent wind. We would recommend avoiding them wherever possible and opting for that traditional soffit to ridge venting so that you can take advantage of the stack effect to consistently provide airflow into the attic space without having to rely on a power vent or the wind. If you found this video helpful, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more weekly building science videos and head over to our website at asiri-designs.com where we have over 150 free building science articles that cover a wide range of topics. Links will be in the description below. For now, good luck with your projects. Cheers.